Okay, this is uh, PowerFlow doing a uh, installation video on a Cherokee 140 with the tuned exhaust system. This configuration here is our short stack. Um, it's called a short stack because of what's sticking out of the cowling. What's sticking out of the cowling will be beneath my hand and over. And you can see here a lot of different uh, scat hoses. I'll go over them in a moment. We'll come around. That's the rest of the uh, installation. This particular airplane only has a single EGT on the number four, so it's been put back there. So let's talk about the scat hose routing and oil hose routing. All the Cherokees had this oil hose right here was switched to a flexible oil hose by an AD in 1996. So this is the variable you never know about because depending upon the routing of this hose, it may or may not get in the way of the exhaust. We want it to be at least two inches from the exhaust headers. And we measured that, that is two inches. But you can't come down too low because the cowling will be here. So this is an acceptable routing. Another way that this happens is oftentimes it's up over and in the intake kind of routing that way. That's a one way to route it as well. Look at our website for additional pictures. So let's talk about talk about the air hose routing. Your air source for cabin heat starts out back here, which is behind the number three cylinder. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of air from the number three cylinder, which is why the number three cylinder always runs hotter than the rest. On our exhaust system, which of course is now sitting in the front, whereas the original one used to sit back here, this exhaust system, we take the air and we give you 57 inches of scat to route all the way around the back side of the engine to feed in right there. Inside of that collector assembly is a giant, basically, radiator. And then we come out, as you can see in the background, see if I can focus on that, right there. That's our output. And the output coming out of this hose, it's two and a half inches, that's provided, comes up, goes to this flow divider right here. Two inches goes to the floorboard heat. There's two one inch outputs. If you have two defrosters, there's one going to there, and there's the other one going to there. Okay, a couple other design features. This is our carburetor heat for the tuned exhaust system. It comes off from a separate air source. Air comes in around the four to one and around there and gets heated, comes out here. Now, this is new as of um, a couple years ago. You can see a drain tube and right there. This is so if water were to come in, it can go down here and it'll have a place to drain. From here, it goes to the carburetor heat flapper valve, which is assembly, which is right there, or right there. The original aircraft intake hose, or at least the one that came on this airplane, is still there, and we still plan to use that. On 1972 and earlier Cherokee 140s, the back side of the air filter, that's the uh, air filter housing, there's the air filter, that, if it's a straight output, Will be a problem. So what we do if that is straight output is there, we supply with all the kits this angled flange. You cut off the straight output and you install that. This way the exhaust system can fit and this, the intake going to the carburetor, which is right there, will still work. Another feature of all the power flow exhaust systems is that we don't need you to use a shaved half inch socket to access the exhaust nuts. This is a standard half inch, in this case Husky, socket. And as you can see right here, goes right up. Plenty of room. It does that on all 
of the exhausts studs. The traditional exhausts, sometimes on Pipers, um, oftentimes on other airplane models, they have reinforcements in this area, or the weld is so big and beefy that you cannot actually get anything but a shave socket up. So no needed, no shave socket needed for a power flow. Remember the headers for you, there's number two, number four, and we tell you to put number, the number two header into the hole labeled number two. And we give you alignment marks. And there you can see the number four is perfectly aligned. The number two we're in just a little bit. Those are your start points. It's okay if you're just a little bit out. But if you have it set like that angle, we know that it's going to be correct. And you can see we have clearance to the oil sump. And we have clearance to the front, clearance to the alternator. If you don't have a lot of clearance, you have enough. Over on this side, this was an unusual installation. This is an um, throttle. We've moved it all the way forward and we have made sure that it is still not touching the shroud. He has a, um, this is an engine mount heater. Um, sorry, an engine sump heater. That one is potentially an issue for us. So um, it has literally bare, minimal clearance here. Um, and the original uh, heater actually came down further and that wouldn't work. And the customer said, let's take the heater off. So we took the heater off. Point to make for you. Oh, you notice there are no clamps going in from these risers into the central box. That's because these headers are designed to move in and out as the cylinders expand and contract. Now the tailpipe is attached to this airframe strap. Now it's not tight yet, but that's okay, it's a secondary. But a feature on this is, of course, when your engine starts and shuts down, it torques a lot. Well, we want this part, which is the tailpipe and the muffler, to be decoupled, no rigid connection here. So we have a ball joint, an articulating ball joint. And you can see it fully moves. And actually, for ease of installation on this particular, um, uh, Cherokee 140 short stacks, it's a lot easier if you disconnect this clamp up here, which will allow, well, allows the clamp to fall off. But now we can put it ang down at a, a lower angle and then we can slide the cowling on around this and then put it back in position, which is how we're gonna do the installation and then you reinstall that clamp hole made with a template that we cut for that tailpipe to stick through. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to put this cowling on. So over here, we've disconnected this clamp. I pushed the tailpipe down. That masking tape is on there to allow us a positioning um, so we don't scratch it. Normally it's better with two hands. It's not in position, but it will be.